Hello and welcome to Cinemastrophe. I'm Don Perrion, saving you from getting ripped off. Last year, one of the original movies I was supposed to do for Video Game Month was Tomb Raider The Cradle of Life. But, due to technical problems, I was forced to switch to a different movie. Having resolved those problems, I now think that it's long overdue. The reason I'm doing this one and not the first one is because I've already written a blog about how unentertaining that one was, unless you're a five-year-old known who was unfortunately born with a birth defect that causes your eyeballs to be born out of your ass. Hell, the only reason the first one made as much money as it did was because fanboys, I was one of them, ran out to see it without knowing what a complete mess it was. Naturally, they made a sequel. A sequel Robert Ebert gave thumbs up to, describing it as better than the first and fun. Maybe he was on his medication that week. Our movie begins in Greece at someone's wedding. Don't know what this has to do with the story, unless Laura plans on raiding this girl's virginity. That's assuming she is a virgin. I have no idea what her sex life is like. She might as well be a virgin. I'm just saying she could possibly not be one. Not that there's anything wrong with not being a virgin. Stop looking at me like that! The festivities continue when a massive earthquake hits. Which again goes back to my original statement of her possibly not being a virgin. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that. Except for the whole angering God and him causing an earthquake during your wedding thing. So, how about those Knicks? Oh great, the film accidentally bled into the original Superman movie. For some strange reason, this brings groups of treasure hunters in the area. I shit you not, the movie does not explain how earthquake equals treasure hunting. Could it be... Laura's team is waiting for her, but she's nowhere to be found. Was all that necessary? This isn't a movie, it's a Juicy Fruit commercial! Jump on your boogie board, grab a stick of Juicy Fruit The taste is gonna move ya Take a sniff, pull it out The taste is gonna move ya when you pop it in your mouth Juicy Fruit is gonna move ya The juice is soft, it gets right to ya Juicy Fruit, the taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move ya and what is the point of the sequence, you might ask? Well, it's nothing more than fan service, of course. Personally, I like my fan service a little higher rated and with a lot less clothing, thank you very much. By the way, this is not my edit. It's like this in the movie, which means several people saw this scene and felt it was acceptable. And who are these two guys? Cameramen? I assume so, since when she gets to the boat, they disappear. Obviously, they don't belong. That's like me filming scenes with my script in my hand in front of the camera. You are correct. It does not compute.
Anyway, they're looking for Alexander the Great's Lunar Temple, and through the magic of Techno Babble, Laura tells them that she knows where it is, and everyone else is searching in the wrong place. Under the sea. Under the sea. Oh, 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 careful there, sweetheart. You're gonna poke somebody's eye out. In the temple, Laura finds a gold sphere, but some evil Asians show up who want the sphere for themselves. No! It's my gold! I think he got the point. During the shootout, there's another earthquake causing the temple to collapse. Before the guys escape with the sphere, they disable Laura's mini sub, making her unable to reach the surface. So she cuts her arm to attract a shark, punches it in the face, and then rides it to the surface. You hear that? That was my special disbelief shattering. You did that movie. I hope you're proud of yourself. She's then rescued three days later by a fucking submarine that she apparently owns! Lara! Lara, it's us, Hillary and Bryce! And that was the hope of any realistic solution to any conflicts in this movie. So what do we have left? How much you wanna bet they destroy that too? We then get introduced to our main antagonist, a bioweapons dealer named Jonathan Wright. He's meeting with his clients when he kills one for trying to turn him into MI6 and tells the rest that he has a new bioweapon for sale. Boring! Meanwhile, MI6 visits Laura and tells her that the man who attacked her is Chang Li, who runs a gang called Shang Lo and is working for Jonathan Wright. After showing her a few pictures, Laura figures out that Wright is going after Pandora's box and that the gold sphere was the key to finding it. In 2300 BC, an Egyptian pharaoh found a place that he named the Cradle of Life, where we, life, began. And there he found a box, the box which brought life to Earth. The pharaoh opened the box, but all that was left inside was a Ramonti, or anti-life. The plague which came as the companion to life. Companion? Okay, this explanation goes on for about two minutes, so here are the cliff notes. The pharaoh sent Pandora's box to India. When Alexander the Great got to India, he accidentally unleashed a plague and realized that Pandora's box wasn't a good thing to have around. He sent some of his men to return Pandora's box to the cradle of life, mapping its location with that golden sphere. Why anybody would map down the location of the world's deadliest plague, you got me. Now I might have bought that, except you already shattered my suspension of disbelief at the beginning of this movie. So no, I'm not buying it. Not one bit. Now, being competent intellectual men of MI6, these guys are gonna think that this woman is completely off her rocker and that our doctor needs to increase the dosage of her meds. Right, thank you. On behalf of Her Majesty, we formally request that you find and recover this box before Dr. Rice. She says she needs help, so they go to a Russian prison to release Gerard Butler's character, whose name really isn't important because you're just gonna call him Gerard Butler anyway. Man, this guy really had the struggle in his early career. Oh, come on. Anyone who was in this movie, driving the 2000 in timeline within a five year period, had to have it rough. Because Gerard Butler used to be a part of the Shing Long, he's offered a full pardon with a new identity if he can help get Laura in. And for those of you who wonder what he was locked up for, he was incarcerated for the who gives a fuck crime. The shilling of spies all over China. We have to get into the country undetected, so we slip into Beijing and we go by truck. Truck? Hmm. I was thinking about something a little faster. And by faster, she means a stealth bomber. Get those wonderful toys. <laughs> she almost killed an innocent man. That's not funny. Ready for what? After that bullshit, we find out that the two used to be lovers and some old lady gives them motorcycles. Who is she? How does she know Laura? Why does she have a weapon shop in her hut? Who cares? We get to watch them drive their motorcycles on the Great Wall of China. Okay, I know it's early, but this movie sucks. It sucks! 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 It sucks!
Thank <laughs> you.